mindfulness. Powerful mindfulness. The course of training of the mind is mindfulness. We make it more closely connected to the way things are, not carried by force of the, our kind of like mundane thought. Really, we become more closely connected to the way things are. That, and then you are looking thoroughly with the way things are and observing. And when we do this, then you what it does become more practical, more sensible. More sensible. And the same thing, then it will also develop for ourselves more common senses. More wisdom, that means more wisdom of shine. Not become wild, kind of like, no kind of practical things. So, really become so sad. And that is a poor thought of the mind, poor training of the mind. And what is supposed is thinking of the, again, our beautiful lives, precious lives. Second is, or reflecting our mind on our precious lives. Reflecting mind on the impermanence. Reflecting mind on the cause and result or the effect of inevitable. And reflecting in the samsara in this world has like challenges and the difficulties. Challenges, uns kind of unstable things in this world has. You are reflecting your mind to that. This is as I say, it is known as also poor kind of mindfulness practices. And the precious life is that again, life is so precious. Each of our life and everyone's life is so precious, so special, so beautiful. Precious. This precious life is we got this about part of time, we got this. It's not just a okay, case, go accidentally. It has so many beautiful calls and conditions. I'm just talking very briefly that, but you can read this though, many books read it, this, it's true. Not talking kind of like stories of the fairy tales, or not talking of the story of someone else. It's talking of emphasis, the way things are in this world, what we found. It's true, practical, <coughs> Western world, looking to the heart, to and kind of appreciating and respecting and reflecting that. That's the what it is. Really, life is so precious. This life is not just by, happened by itself. It has a lot of beautiful cause and condition. Both of life, this beautiful life. And feel happy and joy. How wonderful, how thankful. It's the, again, another form of joy and appreciation. When we have this opportunity, beautiful life, it's not going to stay forever. Again, this is not here in the kind of like attracting stories there. But true, it is not going to stay forever. And no. <coughs> Also, it's changing every time. Every time. Every time changing. So therefore, have some courage, some commitment that I'm going to use this life something beautiful. Thinking of that is known as impermanent. Think of reflecting the impermanent. Life is like a precious, but yet is a project. It's not permanent. It's changing constantly. Continuous changing. Changing one after another. And there's a variety of the, all the uncertainty things that can come. If this precious life can be spoiled. And well, we have part of the beautiful life, beautiful thing, we should do something for the beautiful benefit, beautiful qualities. Which then, that method, known as we're making wise ourselves, more practical ourselves, thinking, using the time, the opportunity to do it. So, the thinking or reflecting of the impermanent. Impermanent also really means it's bad. Because impermanent is bad, good, because we can make the change. Because of impermanent, that's why we are here. If there's no impermanent, we won't be like what we are now. And also impermanent means it will not going to happen exactly what we are. It will not stay like that. It will change. So life is precious, opportunity is precious, but it is not going to stay forever and therefore take the opportunity and back this time something worthwhile and special, something meaningful for myself, to my family, my friend, to everyone and for my future. And then the Buddha's teaching, according to Buddhism, life is not just ended here, ended here, it will continue the next life. 
Whatever we do now will reflect in the future. What we are now is known as a result of the past, of past lives. So when thinking of us what we are now, now what we are, that way, our past deed is not bad. We must do good according to Buddhism. Really good. It's a logic. Logic and reason. Because looking to us, even though we don't see the past alive and the past dead, but looking to ourselves, oh, we did quite okay, quite good in the past. Because I'm quite good. I'm happy now. I'm like good. Enjoying that. And whatever the activity what we're doing now, well reflect that result in the future. Of course, this time, whatever the activity we do, that will reflect the result also to now too, a little bit. But the biggest one, according to Buddhism, it will reflect in the future, in the next lifetime. So, therefore, and we like to have the future bright. Future is un unknown for us. We don't see the future. But definitely the future will be there. Because even though we don't see the year 2020, we don't see the year 2025, 20, uh, 28, 30, year 2008, all that. But even if we don't see, that will be there. It will come. It will come. Similarly, even if we don't see our future lives, but there will be future lives according to this. It's not the world to end. So whatever we do that, it really will reflect all the way today. And therefore, if we do the good activities now, that will reflect all the future, future will be bright. So therefore, this time, this present time, is so precious, so important to do good things for us, to others, to everyone. That's what think of this empowerment. And then cause and effort is inevitable. Cause and efforts are inevitable in the short term and the long term. All that, whatever we do in the short time, whatever good activity we do, that will also will bring the result the same way. If we plant the flower in our garden, in the short time, it will bring flowers. If we continue to take care of that, it will bring flowers. If we didn't plant the flower in our garden, and it won't bring flowers. Flowers. I mean, the same logic, the simple logic, what you will do. It really will reflect. And then, according to Buddha's teaching, according to Buddhism, whatever the activity we do, particularly related with our strong emotions, strong emotions such as positive emotions, negative emotions, whatever activity we do that with that, that will reflect the result some really immediately, but the biggest result will reflect in the future lives. That's the according to the teaching. Teaching it will reflect. Therefore, if anything that what we do, good activity with positive, strong positive mind, then it will be really good for the future. And that was known as in Buddhism, karma. That many of you know all karma means something that activity we did did. Karma is not coming from outside, it's our own deeds. As we went through many times the teachings. Teachings and you know. This is all our activities, resolve our, our activities. So therefore, every kind of activity we should be very thoughtful and we kind of careful and reflecting our mind to the to the, our every action. That is known as also mindfulness. Every our activities are guided by mindfulness and alertness and more more thoughtful. Then it's really it's all practice. It's mindfulness. It's all mindfulness. If we don't come to that, goal, that means the mindfulness means wisdom is guided by our activity by, by the wisdom, which is very beautiful and very special. So those are known as really the karma or the reflecting cause and effect. And then reflecting mind in the, in the, in the samsaras, in this world. And this world has, this samsara world has a lot of challenges, a lot of difficulties, a lot of uncertainty. That is always been like that. That's the called samsara or the world. world. So therefore, for, for we should strong ourselves. Strong ourselves, really trying to kind of strengthen ourselves and the courage and the commitment, do good things and be courage, be strong. And 
and with that understanding and also use our time for the beautiful purpose to benefit ourselves or the, all the beings. So samsara has a challenge, samsara has a difficulty and that. Even though difficulty is also is not just a bad, it has always a result. It always it has a meaning. It's not just happening in itself. It has always meaning. Even sometimes bad things happen, it looks like happening, but from that we can learn, we can become even more stronger, more wisdom, more gain can gain from the difficult troubles. Even looks like very difficult part. Huh? And that really happened. In so many great masters, those enlightenment and they experience a lot of difficulty, a lot of challenges one after another. But those challenges, difficulties that make them as their great enlightenment. We keep the courage and the commitment. So challenges, not not always bad, but yet there's a lot of challenges and difficulties in these things. So those are known as poor, poor training of the mind or poor renunciation, and which is always is good to reflect in those mind on those meanings every time you have any practices. Again, of course, I mentioned kind of that law that in the details you can find in the book. But if you reflect in that simple way, what it is? Breaks the life, the impermanent, cause and effort are inevitable, and samsara has difficult, or the world has uncertain. Kind of prepare ourselves to have that thought. Thought is known as known as portraying in the mind. What it does, I said so many times, it will soften our mind. We become more sensible will become more practical. It will connect ourselves to the to the nature. It really will connect by this. And this is also according to the teaching, for the local gracious teacher, Buddha Shakyamuni gave, gave the first his teaching, what's called poor noble true teachings. So this this poor renunciation thought is the first his two true teachings, such as suffering true, cause of suffering true. That is the basic. Supposed to do things. Now, once we have the death, understand beautifully of this, this suffering truth, the cause of suffering truth, then we follow the, the path. And the path is practice, path truth. When you follow the path truth, then what it comes? It will come then the cessation truth, according to the noble truth. That is achievement and a result. Result, cessation truth. So, now we begin the practices. When you come to the practices, the F if we talk about mundo level, mundo level, then we practice it. There's six different practices. That I will again going to many of you know already, but few of you don't know. I like to just highlight those six different practices.